Just hearing the word Pixar, we all think fun, smart, and entertaining animated films. But there's a darker side to Pixar than we see on the big screen. We're going to reveal all the dark movie theories from Pixar that will ruin your childhood. Now let's dive in and see what secrets Pixar left for us to discover. Brace yourselves and be brave because we're going into the shadows on this one. If you enjoy this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Click the bell to be notified when we upload fresh content. We're home! Riley? Credit card fraud. One of the most controversial Pixar theories is the accusation that Riley's mom in Inside Out has committed credit card fraud. Many fans have very distinct and opposite opinions on this theory. Unfortunately, it seems like the dark side has won again, and we're not talking about Darth Vader here. In the scene where Riley decides to steal her mother's credit card, we get a quick glimpse of the back of the card and the strip that her mother has signed. Her mother's name is Jillian, or Jill Anderson, but the back of the card is signed K. Ann Anderson. Did Riley's mom steal someone else's credit card or get one in a fake name? This could explain why the family had to move so quickly to another city, which caused Riley the emotional stress that drives the story of the film. The fact is, we really don't get much backstory on Riley's parents at all. The fan claimed that Riley's finger was covering the first name and so the theory was fake. However, on closer inspection, it sure does appear as K. Ann Anderson, really making us wonder if this dark criminal theory was planted by Pixar to start the wonderful journey we experience in Inside out. What matters is that we're here for Andy when he needs us. That's what we're made for, right? Parent death or divorce. Toy Story has its fair share of dark theories, and they aren't all about talking toys. This one involved Andy's parents and may explain why we never see his father. The theory goes that Andy's parents are going through a divorce, which would explain all the time he spends with his toys. The other theory takes a guess that Andy's father is actually dead. Both of these theories are supported in the film, and we're curious what is actually going on behind the scenes. Both would explain why there are no photos of a father around, Andy's mom never wears a wedding ring, and why the dad is never seen. Maybe they're going through a difficult divorce and wanting to keep the kids out of it. Or maybe Andy's father passed away and it's too difficult for the mom to look at old photos of him. If his father has passed away, it would also explain why most of Andy's toys are male. He may be trying to replace a father figure or have a man in his life in some way. Andy is especially attached to Woody and Buzz, two positive male figures. Divorce or death, or maybe even Andy's mom being a single mother, any of these theories are kind of heartbreaking. Go to sleep. <laughs> Hybrid species of machine and human. Get ready for this one, we're going into another dimension of the future that Pixar is surely warning us about. The hybrid of machine and human has been explored through animation in their films. This dark theory states that the monsters in Monsters, Inc. are actually a mix between humans and machines. We know you have questions, so we got answers for you. This theory takes place in a post-apocalyptic world where humans are near extinction and need to slowly repopulate to keep their race alive. But machines are now sentient beings as we see in cars. and this leads to the possibility of humans and machines procreating, making a super species. And those babies are the monsters from Monsters, Inc. So this theory is technically an origin story of sorts for the monsters, and a darn dark one at that. Humans are so near extinction that they have babies with machines. Where is Ridley Scott when you need him? We're imagining a creepy science fiction feature based off of this crazy idea. The final question, however, is what happens to the natural humans from before? Well, the monsters realize they need them to power their world, so they create time travel to bring them back and thus the magical monster doors are created. <laughs> Wally destroyed the earth. If Wally wasn't sad enough already, we're going to break your heart a little further with this dark fan theory. Wally hunts and hoards gadgets, tools, and other things on what appears to be a completely destroyed Earth. He ends up killing the other cleaning units because they keep taking his things. That would mean all of the other cleaning bots that were meant to clean up the Earth would be gone, leaving Wally on his own. Without the help from others, the Earth deteriorates and is effectively destroyed, leaving it a wasteland. The humans then have to be evacuated to a more planet. This theory definitely holds up within Wally's story, and even within the greater theory stating that all Pixar films are showing us the apocalypse, but more on the apocalypse theory next. If this is true though, it means that with Wally's quest to find these gadgets and his selfishness to keep them his own, he actually personally destroyed the Earth, most likely by mistake, but the thought is dark and even a bit sad knowing how cute the innocent bot is. We wonder if this was a premeditated decision in the creator's room at Pixar, or perhaps just another fan theory to ruin our our favorite robot. The Apocalypse.
apocalypse has come. The After Hours team at Cracked made a pretty big discovery one night when they proposed that all Pixar movies are about the apocalypse. We've all heard the theory that all the Pixar films take place in the same universe, but this one takes that epic and famous fan theory one step further. What is Pixar warning us about the future? Maybe Pixar is a more of a sci-fi realism kind of place than a fun animation studio. Let's dig into this dark and threatening fan theory right now. The theory ultimately states the extinction of humanity, which even saying that sentence gives us chills. Maybe not human extinction, but at least humans being banned from the earth by cars, toys, bots, and inanimate objects tired of being enslaved by humans their entire lives. All the films are headed towards one ultimate conclusion, that humans are no longer wanted, and that is where most of the Pixar films begin, after humans have been cast aside. Obviously, we start with the films with humans, such as Toy Story, Inside Out, and Ratatouille. After these stories, when cars come along and have banished their would-be slave drivers, the apocalypse begins, finally ending with Wally, described as Cyborg G, to come and rule over Earth along with Eve after its destruction. You know I'm retired from hero work. As am I, Robert. Yet here we are. Double Agent Edna. Let's take another classic Pixar film, The Incredibles, and flip it upside down to ruin your innocence even further. You can thank us later. This theory comes from Tumblr and 4chan, which involves that famous no cape scene. When Mr. Incredible goes to Edna mode to get a new superhero costume, Edna won't stop talking about all the superheroes that have died in horrific ways because of their capes. Stratagal is one of the superheroes who was taken down by her cape, getting sucked into an airplane engine. When you look at Stratagal's stats, you see she was a mere adolescent, a high school student. Thinking about her cape getting stuck in an airplane engine engine is pretty dark, seeing as that would most likely take down the entire plane, killing everyone on board. If this is true, it makes complete sense that Edna would be so adamant about no capes. She has a massive bit of guilt over Stratagal's death. The supers were also sent into hiding, perhaps because of this plane accident they were most likely blamed for. Now the only redemption in this theory is that Edna also designed Syndrome Suit, and knowing he was going to the dark side, she made sure he had a cape to help out her super clients in any way she could. Seeing as Syndrome's cape took him down in the end, Edna really is the secret superhero of the film. Essentially, Edna contributed to Syndrome's death. So play nice. <laughs> Sid the Villain, an anagram of Disney. This theory gets a little personal between Disney and Pixar. Obviously, both are now owned by Disney, but there may be some deep-seated resentment lingering from creator John Lasseter that made it into his first feature at Pixar, Toy Story. John Lasseter previously worked for Disney and was fired because he was adamant about advancing digital animation, which threatened the classic animation style of the studio. Many animators felt frightened by Lasseter's ideas, so Lasseter went to work for Lucasfilm, which was all about advancing technology and special effects. From there, he went on to found Pixar and made digital animation famous, just as Disney made cartoons. Other young innovative artists left Disney or were fired, such as famed director and writer Tim Burton. All that said, John Lasseter's first film, which he wrote and directed, was Toy Story, with a main villain that was the evil kid by the name of Sid short for Sydney, which is actually an anagram of Disney. The theory suggests that Lasseter gave the villain this name on purpose because he was fired from Disney. Fast forward and now he's awkwardly working for Disney once again. Guess they finally caught on to his genius. Humanity extinct. Cars seems to be the franchise that has raked in so much dough for the studio, but still receives a decent amount of love-hate relationships from fans. However, the movie, which appears to be a fun-loving story about cars that can talk, has a much darker side even the director confirmed. The film itself may be a warning of how far we advance technology to the point that something goes wrong. The theory questioning where all the humans are, especially since the Cars world is set up for humans with buildings and all, has finally been answered. Jay Ward, the creative director of the franchise, has said that we have autonomous cars right now. He continues by saying the threatening theory, imagine in the near future when the cars keep getting smarter and after one day they just go, why do we need human beings anymore? They're just slowing us down, it's just extra weight, let's get rid of them. So is cars really a technological apocalypse that is warning humanity of their exponential growth towards non-sentient beings? Basically, Ward has admitted that cars does, in fact, take place after humanity has been wiped off the planet by automobiles that got annoyed with us. Talk about dark, we're pretty much dinosaurs in this movie. Let's just hope this isn't foreshadowing. Toy Story 3 equals the Holocaust. 
If we haven't gotten dark enough, this fan theory will take you down a path so pitch black you won't even be able to see the shadows creeping up. Toy Story 3 may actually be a retelling of the Holocaust. Yeah, you heard that right. The events that unfold in the third installment of the franchise holds up and we're questioning if the studio really did this on purpose. Andy heartbreakingly leaves his toys behind as he grows up, just like how the Allies left the Jewish people to suffer beyond recognition under the reign of Hitler's psychotic discrimination. Buzz Lightyear has an attic, which is much like a safe room and sanctuary, which represents Anne Frank's hiding spot as she avoided the heavy hand of the Third Reich. Further along, there's an incinerator. We're certain you've guessed where that's going. The incinerator symbolizes the gas chambers and ovens that the Jewish people people horrifically suffered in the concentration camps. Yeah, we know it's a lot, but could Toy Story 3 be telling such a horrific story about the past in a children's film? Hi, ah. you like Amy. Oh, she's an artist. <laughs> Lie of Innocence. This is the darkest theory of all surrounding Chief Creative Officer John Lasseter, who we spoke about earlier. He's one of the most influential creators in the animated world, and there's no doubt that he has changed the industry. But this theory explores the man's darker side, even though he's always smiling. All of his characters are smart, innocent, and loving, but all ultimately turn evil. In Toy Story 2, Stinky Pete was gentle and wise, giving support until we find out he was manipulating them and sabotaging Woody's escape. In Monsters, Inc., Mr. Waternoose is a gentle, fatherly figure with Sully, but then turned, becoming overly ambitious, ready to do anything. Morals aside, for the company. Even Charles Muntz from Up, Lotso from Toy Story 3, Six Miles, Axelrod in Cars 2, and Otto in Wally. -E. The worst is Ernesto de la Cruz from Coco, yet another father figure who, at the very end, we find out lied to Miguel from the very beginning and had actually killed Hector and stole his guitar and music. So what does this all mean about Lasseter? Well, since Lasseter has been gone from Pixar, we wonder if he was the seemingly lovely person who deep inside was darker than we can imagine, leaving all those he led disappointed and saddened. Just like our lovable heroes in these films, was Pixar trying to tell us something all along? Kitty. Kitty has to go. Which theory here did you find the most shocking? Are there any other dark Pixar movie fan theories we should know about? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down there. Give us a like and hit the subscribe button to be the first in the know of all of Screen Rant's new content. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you at the movies.